My father purchased this farm in 1960 and I bought it from him in the early 90s. We grow corn, soybeans, and some hay. This is soybeans we're loading here. And of course, we use electric power. The electric motor drives the uh, unload auger that's in the bottom of the bin. And then when we're about empty, we throw a sweep in, and that brings them to the center and out the bottom. That's what we use electricity for, for the grain side. Thank you. My name is Roger Walkus, and I farm in Plainview, Minnesota. This is where our biggest power is used on the farm anymore in the fall when we're harvesting and drying grain. We dry at a grain temperature of anywhere from 150 up to 180. We have motors on every auger and cooling fans on the bend and we still have stock water heaters in the winter. They take a lot of juice and then just basically for our needs here in the house and stuff for heat, air conditioning. This little machine here does all my calculating. There's a lot of challenges on the farm and the biggest thing is probably finances anymore. Our prices are way out of whack to, uh, compared to the cost of production and so many variables. We fight the weather and it's kind of a battle but and you got to be able to look for solutions and, and carry, carry on. One of the challenges that we can control as I went with this solar project always going to need electricity and uh, cost of electricity is not going to go down, I'm sure. What we're looking at here, 33.66 kW ground mounted solar array, consists of 102 330 watt panels. My name is Chris Olofsson and I work for Solar Connection in Rochester, Minnesota. The biggest thing for Roger is that him and his wife Judy have consistently seen their electric bills go up over those years. And so when, when I first met with them, the first question that Roger had to ask was, how big can I go to cover what I need? I was reading about it and I see the incentives that would save you some money and possibly some grants and stuff. This is a good thing to have in between them. It helps keep the weeds down. And and uh, good for the bees, two pollinators. So. The federal income tax credit is still around. Right now it's at 26%. Starting in 2021, it's gonna go to 22%. So there are still very good incentives that are available for everyone. This is a grid-tied solar array. If there's more solar being produced than the house is consuming, that power then gets sold back to the utility. Full sun and it just really puts out. Uh, here in Minnesota, we have a very good policy at the state level called net metering that requires all utilities to pay you at the same rate for the energy you sell as what they're charging you. It looks like they've put out about 38,000 kilowatt hours so far, so they're ahead of schedule. And in his case, he didn't want to sell a lot of the energy back. He just wanted to offset his consumption. Should provide all our power and about 20% extra. There is a momentum across the state. Uh, it has more to do with people's ideals meeting their finances where clean energy keeps coming down in cost. It's really cost effective to do and you know, he's, he's doing good by the environment as well. My name is Fritz Ebinger. I work for the clean energy resource teams for the University of Minnesota Extension. Back in 2013, uh, the state passed a 1.5% solar energy standard, which was a mandate part of that legislation involved the 10% solar energy goal by the year 2030. Uh, we already satisfied the 1.5% mandate a while ago uh, just because the cost effectiveness of solar is so good. So it's still a goal. We've seen a lot of utility companies pivot towards renewable energy as a cost effective generation and you figure out how to create a, a probably a greener mix between natural gas, solar, and large-scale wind. If you look at the statistics, farmers are getting a little bit larger, and smaller farmers are trying to figure out how to make their way through. Uh, one of the ways to do that is to expand, uh, basically acquire more land or maybe more, more livestock. Uh, another way is to specialize, and then diversification, which would include solar now. So farmers that can host a small amount of solar, uh, that's another revenue stream for them. 
utility scale solar development, whether that's a one megawatt community solar garden or maybe a piece of a larger development, does present like a mitigating benefit financially. You're reducing your inputs because you're not tilling and planting that area anymore, and then you're also getting a lot more lease money than you would otherwise from, a, from marginal land. Being a farmer, it probably makes more sense than somebody in town that might sell in a couple years or move on another job or something, but the farm generally stays, you know, a lot of times within the family. Growing up, I started doing chores. I think I was about four. I have several memories of falling asleep in the parlor watching them milk. I think I was supposed to go to bed, but I decided to play around some more. I am Rachel Wackus. I work here at Mayo Clinic, and I am the daughter of Roger Wackus. Oh yes, I named the cows. I did an alphabetical order so that I could easily know which one was born in which order. Um, Q's, Y's, and Z's were not my friends. We might have used yak several times. The most compelling reason to me to move forward with our solar project, growing up we started doing 100% no-till on our farm. So not only were we trying to conserve water and soil, the next thing, why not try to conserve energy? Whether it be wind or solar, I was on board. So I think this is a great opportunity to make this investment so that as I eventually get to take over the family farm, that I'm able to use these funds that we're saving from the energy bill and go ahead and spend that other places where I can invest and improve the um, farm. Power costs are always going to continue to rise and uh, the sun is free. You might as well be self-sufficient with your power. I think farmers really are forward thinkers and they understand how technology works and you know they certainly are stewards of the environment and this is just another example of how you can be both a steward financially and environmentally. I think we're making a positive impact on the planet just because we are setting an example for others to try to see how they can either reduce, generate, do something to make a change so maybe we have less of a footprint leaving things better off than what we found them.